Hey, welcome back to the channel. And uh, as we continue on making our stone guard. Now, let me first say that uh, a success story is not a success story unless there's some failures along the way. And uh, my story is no different. So, shortly after the video where you saw the gel coat being applied, I allowed the gel coat uh, basically to sit overnight because I wasn't ready to start glassing. And I came out the next morning and just to eyeball everything over before I start uh, laminating. And I noticed that in one of the wings on the uh, logo, the paint had lifted a little bit, which I expected a few problems, but <laughs> not as severe as this. So uh, I went ahead and pushed on this just to see how bad it was. Was going to make the decision to go ahead and glass it and deal with it uh, when it comes out. But as I pushed on it, the gel coat broke because it, it creates an air pocket in there. No big deal. I figured I'll just take and blow all the uh, gel coat out that I put on and uh, re-wax it and repaint it. Unfortunately, uh, that wasn't the case. The gel coat did not have enough barrier between the uh, surface of the clear coat that we applied and the gel coat itself. The wax just wasn't, just was not enough. Uh, I had about 10 coats on there and it wouldn't have mattered if I had 100 coats on there. Uh, the styrene within the gel coat broke down the clear coat and literally the gel coat stuck to everything. So let me show you what I've done and uh, how we're going to continue on. Okay, so as you can tell, this does no longer have gel coat on it. Matter of fact, it no longer has primer on it. And uh, it, uh, <laughs> it looks sort of bad right now, but it's salvageable. And that's a good part. So right along this area here, the gel coat lifted and I pushed it down and broke it and that's when I realized that uh, as soon as I broke it through it stuck to the paint underneath. I tried to blow air under it and some of it came off but it also peeled off some paint. Uh, literally I scraped everything down to the wood, sanded everything smooth and <clears throat> my next step is I'm just going to go ahead and touch up things with my templates and my putty, get things back to normal and shoot the gray primer and then we're going to use a different product in which we're going to talk about and I'll shoot a video of uh, how we're going to use that. So anyway, that is my little setback. It's not a heartbreaker. Uh, we built the thing. We can fix it. So uh, I'm not butthurt about it. It just happened and uh, frankly I expected some issues but I wasn't totally sure how severe. So all that being said, like I said, it's not a total loss. Uh, it's just a minor setback for me, but it's a good lesson for you. So where I should have stopped was at the primer coat and then used a different product instead of the wax. I wasn't too comfortable with the wax over the clear coat because it was somewhat soft. Uh, we're not using a tooling gel coat or anything like that. so. It was a 50-50 chance that this was going to work and uh, before I put the fiberglass on uh, I decided well let's just see how bad this is. So it was bad but not beyond repair which is a good lesson uh, that I can share with you. So what we did we primer everything, we had our fillets pulled, everything looked nice, we clear coated it, everything looked great. Uh, at that point I should have switched to a different product. So we were using a TR mold release which if I were using over gel coat would have worked great. But since I wasn't it didn't work great. So my plan is at this stage is I'm going to repair the damage. I'm going to pull some more putty, get my fillets back to shape, get the surface nice and smooth. I will primer coat, make sure that it's nice and flat and smooth. 
and then we will use a product called PVA which is a poly, uh, polyvinyl alcohol which uh, you basically mist on and you build up a layer sort of like a saran wrap if you want it's a liquid saran wrap that we'll be applying in our mold and then when we gel coat and laminate it will create a barrier between the primer coat and the gel coat so there's no chance of sticking it may present a little issue coming out because the PVA may want to stick to the primer but we'll deal with that when that time comes but I don't expect an issue so I have more gel coat coming I've got the PVA coming when that arrives uh, this will all be back to normal and primer coated and look just like it never had any damage at all and then I'll show you how to apply the PVA so uh, that's my little setback uh, like I said no success story is a success without some failure so I'm sharing that with you so uh, if you're following along and you're following step by step what I'm doing I don't want you to make the same mistake that I did so with that don't use the wax if you use the products that I used we're going to switch to a different product and that will work so I knew better too I should have stopped when I hit the primer coat and just used the PVA but eh, it is what it is alright so in this video once the products arrive we'll uh, shoot the PVA on and then I'll uh, gel coat once again and we'll pick up where we left off and we'll begin laminating and uh, I'll be a lot more confident when that material is applied and we'll have a part popped out of this in no time and then we'll just move forward and we'll have a stone guard in front of the trailer so that was a lesson learned and follow that advice don't use the wax <laughs> we'll use PVA alright guys it's about a day and a half later and I am happy to report we're back in business so I've touched up the mold got it to the point where I'm ready to spray the PVA well almost we got to wax it but uh, let me just give you a shot of what we got uh, ready to begin and I'll show you the product we're going to use and then we're going to apply it so the last time that you saw this mold it was in rough shape uh, but we were able to fix our mistakes so it was bare wood and uh, I began sanding everything smooth again I took my putty pulled some more fillets around the edges here and uh, where I had gouged things when I stripped it and sanded and filled and sanded some more and filled just a little bit more and primer coated so we are back to where we should have stopped last time uh, but we're in a good position now to apply our PVA and uh, we'll show you that product here in a minute I did start waxing just a little bit on the edge here to see how it was going to handle the wax and it handles really good so once we get the wax applied this will give us a nice sheen and uh, then we'll be ready to spray our PVA so let's take a look at that so the product that I purchased is a polyvinyl alcohol it is a water soluble liquid and uh, it goes on in spray form and it goes on in several coats and the idea is to fog it on as lightly as possible uh, two or three coats and then each subsequent coat you put on a little wetter and a little wetter until you get it to uh, eh, to flow nice and smooth so that's what we're going to use I uh, purchased this on eBay and also with that can with the uh, PVA release wax this is the uh, number two so number two wax number 10 PVA and combined that will give us a uh, a good surface that we can gel coat on the wax will allow the PVA to release from the mold and we'll successfully pull apart get it trimmed and put on our trailer because we got some traveling to do so the PVA wax is a uh, pretty thick paste wax we're just going to take a rag and uh, 
get a nice little chunk of that on there and then we'll slowly work it in onto the surface and I wouldn't say that it completely dries right off the bat but we want to rub that in and it does soak into the primer coat pretty quick so my technique for this first coat is I'm going to apply it and then I'm going to come back and I'm just going to polish it off and then I'll reapply a coat over top of that and uh, that'll help seal that primer and then we can begin really primer coating our, uh, not primer coating, but waxing our mold. So, so you can see the difference there. I think that's going to look pretty decent. So let me get this thing waxed up and we'll shoot some PVA. All right. Before we shoot the PVA, let me show you what we're going to use. I went down to my local Harbor Freight and I purchased a little pneumatic uh, spray gun. And it's a touch-up gun. Cost uh, 35 bucks. And I also got a uh, little uh, air filter or water filter on there. So this is the gun. And it just holds about a half a pint and about four ounces what it says. And it also comes with a regulator, and this is the filter that I purchased because my air compressor is slightly old and it's got water in the lines and everything. So uh, because PVA is water soluble, the last thing you want to do is shoot water into the PVA onto your part because, eh, it'll ruin it. So, uh, out of the box to set it up, what did I do? So... This is your product uh, for your needle. And so basically I closed that all the way off and I made me a little, I don't know if you can see it, a little mark on here. Show me where the top is. Then I opened it one full turn. The bottom is for your air and I opened it full blast. And this little knob here is for the fan. So I opened it as wide as it can go and which is not that wide. I mean, we're only talking a couple inches wide. The uh, regulator. So the gun is uh, max pressure is about 45 PSI. So I hook up my air compressor. I squirt air through it and I set it at 45, release it. And I think I have the compressor set at about 60 pounds. So it'll shoot a constant 40 pounds air pressure, uh, which is what we want. So we want a fine mist and we want product coming out and we want to be able to shoot the PVA on our part. Very easy. You can do this uh, piece of cake. You really can't screw this up. Remember, this is just a, a liquid plastic. You're shooting it on your mold. If it runs, it puddles. You can take a little brush and smooth it out or an airline and just, you know, dry things out. But like I say, you can't mess this up. So this is, this is what I should have done the first time. Uh, hindsight 2020 so to load our gun all we're going to do is just take the lid off here take the lid off of our PVA and just pour a little bit in the cup and I'll probably pour about I'll probably pour about two ounces in the cup and that's all we're going to need for tonight close that up we'll set it aside and then we'll take our lid and put it on the cup and seal it up just a little bit. Then we're ready to go. We'll hook the air line up to it and we'll start spraying the mold. Now, I've already went over this thing twice with the PVA. Uh, one, <laughs> just to make sure I had the gun set up straight and didn't look like a, a fool uh, doing something that's not going to work. But it works great. So what we want to do is we want to attempt to make a uh, just a fog coat. It's going to look real dull and mist it on as fine as we can. And we'll do that. I'm going to do that throughout the week. And then the last night, I'm going to really wet it out and make it nice and smooth. There's an area here that's a little bit shiner than the rest. Because um, I tried a little sample here, but... That's what we're going to end up with is something very shiny when we're all said and done. 
This creates a nice plastic barrier so when we go to gel coat and laminate, this uh, protects the surface of the mold from the gel coat and we'll be able to get our part out like we should have done the first time. But, uh, eh, we're going to get it right this time. So, let me show you how I'm going to miss that on there and uh, we'll do that, like I said, several times throughout the week, couple nights. I want to get enough on here and then the last night we're going to really wet it out and we'll get a nice shine on here. We'll get a good buildup of the PVA so our part will come out in one piece and we'll be hooking this thing on the trailer here by the weekend. So earlier I had the garage door open. I was able to uh, spray the PVA and had enough airflow that I wasn't worried about breathing this stuff but the garage is closed a little bit now because it's late at night. Don't want a lot of dust and bugs and everything coming in. So you're going to want to have yourself a respirator. And so I'm going to be wearing a respirator. We'll hook up our air gun and I'll show you how to fog this stuff on. Okay, let's shoot some PVA. what we're looking for. We got uh, several fog coats on here and so it's looking pretty dull and that's what we want. So the first uh, three or four coats, five coats, six coats, however many you want, you're going to fog it on. Then we're going to really open up the nozzle and give it a nice wet coat and it should turn out nice and glassy by the time we're said and done. So it's looking uh, pretty good and I'm, I'm confident how it's going to turn out. All right, so I'm going to continue to do this throughout the week because the only time I'm going to get a chance to gel coat this and laminate is on the weekend. And uh, But I want to make sure that we got a good enough coverage on this that nothing is going to stick this time. So that's what you want to do. You get it to the primer stage, wax it up real nice and good, and then start applying the PVA, and you're sure to get a good release. So the next time that you see this, I'll probably give a shot of, uh, well, I may or may not. I want to be able to pick up where we left off. So I'm going to give this thing a good couple of wet coats, make sure it's nice and shiny and pretty, and I'll gel coat it. Then we're going to pick up where we left off, and we'll get to laminating this thing so we can get our part pulled out, trimmed, and get it on the trailer. Man, we got some camping to do. So... Thanks for staying tuned. Thanks for bearing with this video. I hope you learned something uh, from my mistakes. And uh, if you decide to build your own or when you do build your own, this is the steps that you should take uh, to get out a good part so you can be able to make your own stone guard. So until next time, please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Like the, uh, like the channel, like the video, and share it. Uh, on some of the uh, forums. That would be kind of cool. And as always, please stay tuned.